Welcome back folks, my name is Last No Meal and today we're gonna be talking about CDPR, Cyberpunk 2077 and The Witcher 3, or The Witcher in general, and the future of this company, because yesterday um, CDPR had an investors conference, the usual one that they have where they have Q&A, where they actually present all of the results that they had done in 2020 to their investors and they talk a little bit more about the future of the company and everything which has been happening with the release of Cyberpunk 2077 etc etc. So we're gonna be going through that. I went through the entire um, audio so you don't have to but if you actually want to know more about what they've been talking because they go into detail about taxes and all of that which is mostly investors concerned and not usually a concern of a end consumer but um, if you wanna you know also hear that, I left you a link down below to the full video. I don't know if they have a transcript yet, but if they do put it, I'm going to update the links to also put in the transcript. So, before we begin, if you could please click that like and subscribe button, it would be extra helpful for the channel. I try not to run sponsors, so this is the only thing I request. Thank you so much, and without further wasting your time, let's get into the video. So first things first, Cyberpunk 2077. So in 2020, CDPR had a total sale of 13.7 million copies sold. That only includes um, Cyberpunk 2077. 56% of that was on PC slash Stadia. 28% was on PlayStation 4 and 17% was on Xbox One. So we can hear we can see here that the majority of sales in 2020 for Cyberpunk 2077 was done through PC. Now also, 9.6% of those sales were on GOG and the rest were on other platforms. And this is only for PC volume. So 9.6% of PC volume of sales was done through GOG, everything else was done uh, through Steam, Epic Games, and whatever else they actually counted in for this. I was kind of surprised. It was only 9.6% on GOG, but going, you know, back a couple of years, GOG was kind of struggling, but now they're actually doing some good moves as a separate company to actually have those sales increase. So yes, 9.6% of those sales uh, of Cyberpunk 2077 were done through GOG. When it comes to other sales... Witcher, the entire franchise so far, has sold 50 plus million copies, with The Witcher 3 selling 30 plus million copies. So The Witcher 3 is still more sold than Cyberpunk 2077, but at the same time, Witcher did come out in 2015, but um, we can see that the sales of The Witcher 3, even in 2020, were higher. So, for the company, this game is still making huge amounts of money, and in my opinion, I think it's going to continue making money even more than Cyberpunk 2077 in the future. Now, we're going to talk about the future of Cyberpunk 2077. Now, I know that in the past, the management did lie about some things to their investors. Now, this time, I hope that's not going to be the case again, because that would be extremely stupid to do from the management standpoint. You don't want to lose your company because investors want, you know, a return on their investment. And obviously, like a lot of investors left after Cyberpunk 2077 was released, you can also see the value of their company dropped hard. Um, so right now, I think they want to just, you know, keep the investors, the current investors in the company happy. So I doubt they would be lying to them, but, you know, I don't want to say anything that is 100% true or false because we don't know. We have to wait and see for that. So what's going to be the future of Cyberpunk 2077? So they mentioned a few things here, a few events which are going to kind of revitalize the game because investors were asking like what's going to be happening with Cyberpunk 2077 is there going to be some sort of a relaunch or some events which is going to make the reviewers go into the game and revise their score they have been talking a lot about reviewers they have been talking a lot about the scores that were given by those reviewers and um, investors were asking if there is any chance 
that they can do something like relaunch the game in a sense so that uh, you know those scores can change obviously now when it comes to that obviously the relaunch itself is not gonna happen i mean if you count in the next gen versions maybe you can count that as a relaunch but you know they are not gonna be making the game again or giving you some other um variations of the game which is going to cost money so what they plan to do in the future is something that we already know about but they have been mentioning dlcs expansions the return to the playstation store and updates to the game and when people ask what are they, their strategies basically to you know go on the good side of of the community and gamers they just basically said it's a very simple thing they want to do and that is to update the game with content and fixes that's kind of their own only strategy right now um so far when it comes to the online element they said we're not going to be mentioning that i will go into online elements um but uh, yeah for now they just said they're going to be focusing on single player content because online and multiplayer games or projects have a tendency to fail hard if they're not actually fun or good so that's why they don't want to risk it with the multiplayer or online yet what they want to do is continue releasing single player games because from the business standpoint that's a proven strategy to keep making the money because um online elements they don't want to play with that yet because um they're afraid that if that flops uh, the company is going to be in a very bad position which i agree with because online and multiplayer has to be updated all the time it needs to have a good formula in order to work otherwise you just wasted a lot of time and that multiplayer side is going to die and like you can have people leaving single player game but if people start leaving multiplayer games that's a, that's a bummer now that's a problem when it comes to the budget of making cyberpunk 2077 so they had spent 317 million on the development of cyberpunk 2077 they had 530 devs from cdpr working on it and 5200 plus people in the project itself now when they say 5200 people they include pretty much everyone i think even transportation drivers whatever so that means everyone who was in some shape way or form was actually you know um connected to the project itself so <clears throat> they include the actors seat and everyone else all of the technical teams that were doing the the shooting and filming and you know recording audio and mocap and everything so they include everyone there but it's it's crazy when i think about it that they had sold so far in 2020 13.7 million copies of cyberpunk 2077 now if we calculate that i believe this is 685 million in revenue and when it comes to refunds they are already done when it comes to refunds they're finishing up the final um refunds for the game but they're pretty much done when it comes to that now let's move on further so online elements for future games and for basically what is cdpr going to do with multiplayer and online so as they said to their investor they don't want to reveal anything yet because they are afraid that it might flop or something like that so they want to focus on single player first and then go full multiplayer i mean obviously with single player but until they're stable they're not gonna be going into those ventures but they are working on multiplayer to see what kind of things they can do to make it relevant and to make it fun so that has not been scrapped that is basically still in development but it's probably gonna be going into a much slower pace than initially i believe they thought before you know releasing cyberpunk 2077 and um yeah they're they're not ready yet to go into that online element when it comes to their mobile game uh which are monster slayer which is currently I believe in the closed beta they had a soft launch i believe in new zealand or australia or something like that and they have been unlocking that slowly so monster slayer is coming out this summer so we are going to have that and besides um this release they are actually planning the next gen version for cyberpunk 2077 by the end of the year and also the next gen version for the witcher 3 by the end of the year so we're gonna be getting that as well keep in mind the witcher 3 next gen edition is being done by another team 
Um, I believe it's either the same team or they outsourced uh, like they did with The Witcher, um, Witcher 3 on Nintendo Switch. So that version was also outsourced and um, this version is outsourced as well. But the Cyberpunk 2077 next gen versions are being developed within CDPR so those are not being outsourced. When it comes to the hack, and that's something we haven't been talking for a while, it took them three weeks to restore the systems, no data was lost because it was on backup, they were not commenting on what data was stolen, what happened with that data later on, because the investigation is still ongoing, they're still actually talking to various agencies and police, so that whole situation is still developing and it's not been restored yet. Now, they finally know how they got in, so there was a loop in the third party app and they managed to get a backdoor through that third party app and to get into their system so they were not actually didn't go in directly through CDPR system or through CDPR security but they managed to actually go through a third party app to actually hack um, CDPR so that loophole was like I hope that's fixed now but yeah and um, as I said, it's still ongoing when it comes to that. So yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it when it comes to the actual, um, you know, investor's call. Again, I'm not gonna bother with other stuff, which is usually like uh, internal company oriented with, you know, taxes and what they're gonna be um, paying people. But there is one thing I also want to mention. So they have 20% of revenue from, <clears throat> I believe, 2020. 20% of total revenue from the company is going to be going to, you know, people working there as bonuses. But 10% of that, so half, goes to management. And I believe this strategy did not change, that um, it was always, I believe, 20% revenue in bonuses. And from that 20%, half goes to the management itself. So keep that in mind. So yeah, these were all of the most important elements and most important things we did see from that um, investor's call. Uh, again, I'm going to leave you a link down below so you can actually read more about it if you want to have more info. But that's actually the plan for the company. So in the rest of uh, 2021, they are going to be working on updates and content for the game. And they've been talking a lot about content, so I actually do believe that through DLCs and through expansions, they're gonna be, you know, increasing the amount of content and the amount of stuff you can do in the game, which again, I hope that content is not uh, in expansions, but rather in DLCs, because that would mean you lock out certain content behind a paywall. That means if you wanna have certain, let's say, features in the game, you have to go by the expansion for those features to unlock. Now, I'm saying it's not happening, but I hope that it doesn't happen, and I hope those features, like most important features, are done through updates and free DLCs because um, then, I, I, you know, having expansions and putting more features there would kind of be okay, but um, I hope they go with that strategy. We're gonna, we're gonna see what happens. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Everything for today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to tell me down below what do you think about all of this, and don't forget um, to also, as I said, smash that like and subscribe button because you do help the channel that way and if you want, share that video. Thank you, thank you, thank you and uh, yeah. Also visit us on Discord and Twitter for more news and I do have Patreon. If you want to support the channel in an extra way, you can follow the link down below and become a Patreon today. And huge thanks to my current Patreon um, subscribers. And that's it. This is LKM signing out and stay classy everyone. Bye bye.